Popcorn Junkies are Hi. here to review um, Idris Elba's Yachty. I think I've said before, I'm, I've been on record as saying I'm not an enormous Idris Elba fan. I did like The Wire. I quite He's liked him in The Avengers. He's good in Prometheus. He's very good in Prometheus. Maybe I do like him. Co-produced by Warp Films which is affiliated to one of my favourite record labels, Warp Record, um, and starring Amal Amin, Stephen Graham, who was recently in the TV series Save Me, playing a paedophile. The story is, starts in 1973. It's about a boy growing up in Jamaica who sadly witnesses the uh, death of his brother and then gets sort of tied up in the drug dealing trade in Jamaica and is sent on an assignment, really, to get him out of the way because uh, he's caused a bit of trouble in Jamaica. He's sent over to London. Kingston. Yeah, and there's that great line in the trailer, I sent you away from Kingston to avoid oh, starting a war. I sent you to London so you want to start a war in Kingston, and now you start and a war in, in London. In London. Uh, so he goes to London where he then gets, sort of, you know, goes into the murkier and murkier underworld of drug dealing. Also very... where his wife and child live. Also, uh, yes, good point. Also where his wife and child live. But we jump forward 10 years. So it starts in 1973 with him as a boy, and by 1983 we're in central London. It was like a Jamaican version of yeah. Goodfellas. I sort of oh, felt, yeah. you know, it was about a man in a hole, classic mm. genre. What was that wonderful phrase at the beginning? The choice of two paths? Oh yeah, you choose the path of the righteous or the damned. But anyway, the entire film kind of operates in the shadow of the death of his brother. The first sort of, I'd say, 20 minutes were stuck in Jamaica, and I thought that was great. It was really, really good. The set it? design was amazing throughout the film. Throughout the film? Uh, I thought it was a really powerful start, yeah, to be honest. it was, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 without giving anything away. I was worried watching it that we were going to get a bit of a sort of sanitised version of things. Do you know what I mean? A, a sort of oh, this is the sort of almost cliche-ridden Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, it won't be it, real enough. Yeah, but I, 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 there was a very long, prolonged scene where his brother is in the in the process of setting up a sound system in order to bridge the two gangs. Yeah, together. And that was, a, I really liked that. I really liked that too. Yeah. yeah. And then we arrive in London. And when he arrived in London, one of the things that quite staggered me about this film was how brilliantly observed the period detail was for mm. 70s, 80s London. Yeah. Like from the interiors of his, his his wife's or girlfriend's flat to the cups people were using to the mm. cupboards on the wall. It was the van that really made Yeah, the police things. van, the vehicles, the corrugated iron. <laughs> Where's corrugated iron gone? I mean, I remember as a kid playing around those streets and there was corrugated iron everywhere and you used to have to peel it right back. Yeah. And as you ran through it, it would ping back and smash you on the arse as you went through. But when he gets to London, we meet a Oh, psychotic yeah. character <laughs> played by Stephen Graham. Introduce us to Rico. Rico! I really, I actually really, really liked him. I did. I think sometimes I couldn't really understand what he was saying. Well, because he flips between the he Jamaican he patois between J Jamaican and then accent London. And then English accent. Yeah. No, but sometimes I really was struggling, but I thought it worked because he was a cokehead. <laughs> And he was off his head most he of was. the time, so it kind of worked that he was not really making sense. He just yes. was angry like all the time, and I, I really—he was really scary looking. He like, was his scary. eye color and everything. Yeah, but he was but kind he of those, like charmingly scary. But he had those sort of which many drug addicts snake have eyes. Those, those snake eyes, but those pinprick eyes because yeah. his, like, his brain is so addled yeah. with what's going on in it. Yeah, and there were moments where he was so clumsy with his drug taken that he just had like white powder all over his face. He was like, if you haven't seen Goodfellas, he's, he's, he's like the Joe Pesci character in Goodfellas who stabs someone through the neck with a pen. So when he's on top of the roof with the gun, like... Oh my God, yeah. Well, that was, that was a bit Al Pacino in mm. um, Scarface. Although he was scary and kind of insane every time we met him, he was also quite stupid and pathetic. Yes. He wasn't really scary himself. It was what he was kind of projecting through yeah. other people. I don't know. I felt like he could have had more scenes. I did too. What are you do, Rico? Yeah. I wanted Rico in it a bit more. I think they almost threw away their strongest thing. Yeah. Because what was the name of the guy based in, what's his name? King Fox. King Fox. So King Fox, I thought King Fox. Sheldon Shepard played mm. King Fox. And I thought King Fox was a remarkably sort of aquiline, beautiful yeah, face, didn't he? And he played a sort of the right side of menace with a bit of comedy in there. Yeah. Befriending D. He was being, quite calm as well. He was though. calm. He was really like... And you could see why D, the main character, had kind of lent on him as a sort of father yeah. figure and a trust figure. So I got all of that. Because really, my memory now, my lasting memory is of Stephen Graham, Rico, almost exploding with so much coke induced energy 
that he was but he was always behind that desk yeah it's yeah. like he just almost had nowhere else to go and yeah. okay he went on the roof at one point but i thought you know i wondered whether maybe he was busy and he could only give him a couple of days or something it's yeah. like um king fox says at one point he said you act like you're a boss but you're actually a customer i i did struggle at times with the accent i felt like mm. there could have been some subtitles sometimes oh right with the actual jamaican accent yeah yeah, yeah yeah because they were always talking in English, but with a Jamaican accent. What did you think of Dee, the actor who played Dee? Amal, I, I mean. I really liked him. I, I wasn't great. sure when he was playing a younger version of himself, when mm. he had the shorter dreadlocks. Did mm. you find it believable, the story? At, at times I was a bit like, would that really happen? I thought there were a few creaky moments yeah. in, the, in, the, in the narrative. A few sort of, you were, you were sort of asked to kind of, all right, okay, well, that, yeah. that's a bit unbelievable. Yeah. And would that have really happened? And it was a bit convenient that he ran there at that point. Yeah, and... the things that made me kind of go, is that really realistic? And mm. It was, it's different because obviously, like you said in the film back then, didn't have CCTV. Yes. And it was easier to smuggle things through. And obviously there were the obvious things where he'd been kind of saved. He was the, saved by the bell kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just got out of the situation. Yeah. It didn't really seem unrealistic to me. That happens no. a lot. Did you like the soundtrack? I love the soundtrack. I really like the all the music in it. My Jamaican guy. Do, 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 do. Grace Jones, some brilliant tracks there. Again, really taking me back to my childhood. Also, I loved the three younger younger boys. Yeah, they were funny. They were sort of they like Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and Tweedle someone else, weren't they? Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and Tweedle. Do. Doodah. Tweedle Tweedledoodah. Doodah. They were there for a comic effect, weren't they? Yeah, they were sort and, of... and I, thought, I felt like there was just enough of them. It's funny because if I had any concerns with the film at all, the only concerns I had with it were the slight moments of unbelievability in the story. Not in the storytelling. I thought, I thought there were a couple of scenes where, in a weird way, Idris Elba had so beautifully conceived them and evoked a sense of place and mm. time. I mean, if you need a top draw lesson in how set design and production design and an evocation of era, yeah. it can be done so completely, but in a way that's not Downton Abbey and all that kind of stuff. This was brilliant mm. period drama. This yeah. was, you know, it's a contemporary period drama, but it's a really, I, I mean, I was almost getting goose. I mean, there was a moment where they were inside one flat and on the floor was my nan's carpet. I don't mean like, oh, no, it looked cool. like a, it was her carpet, <laughs> wasn't it? It was identical. I leant over and said, that's Nanny I mean, and the cups, they, I mean, it sounds weird that I'm saying all of that, but it, it so allowed me to enter into the believability of this story. I think Idris Elba's almost cursed by the fact that he's known as an actor. Mm. We all recognize his face. He's often talked about as potentially being the first black James Bond and then the story always I fades away. Is. And I hope this doesn't sort of detract from the fact that this was a, I thought this was a brilliantly directed yeah, I, I film. I really hope too ma not too many people make like first assumptions instead yeah, yeah, of just yeah. because it's an Idris Elba film because I, I, I didn't really make any judgments of it. I just saw it as a really good looking film. I don't really Yeah. Know. Was it interesting seeing a time when mobile phones and digital culture wasn't there? Yeah, I love I love that time. Like all of my friends you know, it's it's interesting because like this generation obviously we have all the phones and all of my friends they all want to be in those times like the eighties, seventies, because yeah, that yeah, was yeah. before that stuff was around. Yeah. And everyone was out all the time. Um it's weird though because obviously it was portrayed as unsafe to be out on the London streets because obviously he's being, he's got into a bit big mess yeah, with yeah. The drug cartels and stuff. But how in this generate this day and age, the reason why kids are on their phone so much is because they don't go outside because we're told that it's, it's a not lot, safe. It's not as safe as it yeah. was back then. And then you look back then and you were like, but yeah. there weren't CCTV cameras back yeah. then. I, I thought the set design was amazing. Like, it deserves something for set design. It does, so it really does. It. And then the music, and the music was more than just a soundtrack. The music was endemic to the story. So, you know, a, a lot of, uh, what was driving, obviously, Dee's brother back in Jamaica, and what was driving this little group of th these three sort of comic characters was they were committing crime in order to sort of fuel their sound system. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, there was a, there was a sense of how important these sound systems, if you go to Carnival, mm -hmm. certainly Carnival when I was a kid in the 70s, you know, the sound systems, it was a really big, almost spiritual thing yeah. that you got behind, behind certain sound systems mm. and, and, and believed in the music. You know? Yeah, it was interesting because obviously it was a film 
set around the drugs and mm. everything because he's dealing them and it's Yardy which is drug related. You know? Yeah. But it was mostly about the music. It was, wasn't it? I was also going to say that the actor that played the young D was amazing. God, yeah, he was and good, wasn't he? he cry, yeah. And that's really good directing. Yeah. When you can direct a child. Absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. You're right. I was thinking that having just directed children. It, it, it's that thing of allowing them to really be themselves and yeah. yet at the same time making sure they're heading towards what you need yeah. for them. The other thing I quite liked that was sort of that sort of hung over the film was this idea of the nine days funeral thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is something I'm fascinated with. And the idea that when someone dies in Jamaican culture, you have nine days of mourning and you're feed in... Feed them. And feed them and you care for them and hydrate yeah. them and you look after them and you make sure that they're in a happy place so that they, they pass away. Mm. And I felt that what I liked about this was you got great moments where he would have visions of his brother, which... Yeah, I because think he, in, he, obviously, when he was younger, like, disrupts the kind that's of... That's right offering of food and drink and the tradition is that you don't do that otherwise the right. soul gets trapped between life and death and they yeah. become a ghost and like throughout the movie it's kind of him every now and again seeing his brother mm. it was another sort of more subtle example of, of what a good directing job Idris Elba had done because in in other hands it could have been a bit eggy yeah, you know, there were moments when it came in and I was thinking, am I going to buy this? And I was thinking, oh yeah, no, actually I do. It was mm. done quite subtly, it was done quite emotionally. Yeah, it wasn't an eggy film at all. No, it much. wasn't, was it? No. Interestingly, Stephen Graham's performance, I've heard it said that he himself, this sort of flipping between London and Jamaican, yeah. he does, in his lineage, he does have some Jamaican heritage yeah. in him. Because so. it's weird, because he, he obviously looks white mm. but there's something Jamaican about him yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like you can tell. I mean he's a ball of energy I mean if I had in a weird it's way it's a bit when he's playing his music and, he, and oh. he's like is, is, it's alright and goes I mean there was an you know I felt his character almost sits in a long list of like Dennis Hopper, his character of Frank Booth in Blue Velvet, yeah. who's such a lunatic that whenever he's on screen, you're like, literally, what the hell is going to happen next? What is he going to do? Breathe into his mask, hit someone, kill someone, rape someone? What the hell is going to happen here? Yeah. Um, and I felt in a weird way, Stephen Graham's character was had all of that about him. But like you said, I thought I would have played with him even more. I'd have had him mm. do something even... I'd have taken him more to the edge of kind of, you know, torture and stuff. Yeah, like well, that. one really stressful bit is when he's kind of threatening to... Yeah. Something. <laughs> Put it this way, he put some cellophane on the floor, and I know, even in my own limited experience of the underworld, that if you put someone put cellophane on the floor and you're in there and there's it's a lot of... It's not good. It's not going to be a good, good outcome. No, no. Scores on the doors. Scores on the doors. I didn't really, not care, but I didn't mind that it was it was directed by Idris Elba. It didn't hold me back at all. Right. In fact, it made me want to see it more. Okay. I actually think that everybody in it was really, really good, and it was really atmospheric. Mm. And I love the music, and I love I liked all the character setups as well. Mm. Although I would want a bit more of um, Rico. Yeah, Rico. I would I would have wanted more of Rico. There were a few scenes that didn't have to be there. That like you said, there were a few scenes where he's brought back to the wife's house. Yes. There was long conversation scenes, which I guess kind of needed to be there but then they were just a, a bit too much i hope i had one slight problem with oh, it oh okay i did i didn't find it long but i felt like there was a, at one point of the movie i thought it was a really good ending and then the ending they decided to go for i was a bit disappointed ah. with. i don't know if you remember there was one end the first yeah. ending and then i thought it was really year. really good i was like oh my god i'm so shocked what just happened this is going to be the end this is going to such mm. a great film still was a great film and then it, it carried on, and then it was the second ending, which was the real ending. And I was like, okay, well, it's I can deal with it. Mm. I would have preferred if it ended a bit before that. And if this is his first film, if he's going to make any others in the in the future, then they're just going to get better. Oh my God, I've got to rate it. I think I'd give this an eight out of ten. Many great directors have come to our attention with first films that are far more leaky at the edges, shabbily done, with obvious flaws and, and such like. Perhaps Idris Elba hasn't been championed as, this hasn't been championed as the arrival of Idris Elba the director because we all know Idris Elba and he doesn't, it's felt that he doesn't need any sort of accolades or mm. kind of, you know, c congratulations. But I think, you know, within the pantheon of British filmmakers, I think this does mark the arrival of an incredibly uh, astute and and skilled director. Yeah. There was, as I said, there were some narrative creaky moments, I thought, just, yeah. just you didn't believe that this turn or that turn and it was a bit of good fortune and a bit of good luck. Mm -hmm. But I thought his, his evocation of place, time and atmosphere 
was second to none. I was absolutely transported back to this very, very moment in time which I lived in and around. Uh, obviously I'm not black and I wasn't of it, yeah. but I was in it and around it and close enough to it to smell it, feel it, live it, touch it and hear it. And this was it, I was in it, it was real. And so for that, I thought it was an absolute, an absolute triumph. So Stephen Graham was great, he was a standout, but as much as Stephen Graham was a standout, Sheldon Shepherd, for me, King Fox was a brilliantly, oh, the way he just kind of just had this oozing charisma and presence, mm. and it was a bit creepy, and it was a bit sinister, and it was a bit this, Did you really know what to think of him? No, no, and I, so I wanted more of him. I wanted more of the villains, actually. And, yeah. But that, that said, I thought Amal Amin was brilliant as D. Mm. So I, I think I would share in your verdict. I'll give it okay. an eight out of 10 as mm. well. I wanted to give a quick shout out to the, the extra. He was a guy in a car at one point, at one point in the scene, I'm not going to say what happens, but he gets out of the car and he says, what do you think you're doing, Egypt? <laughs> and then one of them goes, what do you think you're doing, Egypt? He's like, don't call me an Egypt, you Egypt. <laughs> and I found him so funny and then when he obviously saw the situation, he was in, he like, got back in his car, like, sorry, and just went off. It was like a proper English guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. That was funny, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. I feel like that would have been you. It would have totally been me. I'd have been feisty enough. Yeah, in and fact, then... even if you, I'm pretty sure even if you saw a machete, you'd still get an argument. What are you doing with a machete? Well, I did once beep a car and the guy pulled over, got out, got into his boot and he took out a baseball bat and walked towards me and I just went, all right, mate, you're fine. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.